Cool, so I really like undo. Uh, a while ago I found this program called bpython that has undo, and this undo works, uh, or bpython's kind of nice, as you can see I have some tab completion here, we've got some, some fancy other things going on, but my favorite feature is that if I make a mistake here and I accidentally call this method with the wrong arguments, oh, I can make that go away, I can get that screen real estate back. And I'm not even just, I'm not even, like, I'm actually unbinding variables here. Look at that, A is gone. How does that work? What is going on here? This is super cool. So when I found this, I wanted to know. Um, and maybe someone like wrote a fancy Python interpreter wherein like if you pop an element off of a list, maybe we remember what that was and we can append it again if you undo, but then the ref count, like how does that all work? And the answer is that's not at all how we do it. Instead, if you have this state in your terminal and you're trying to go back, you're trying to undo, let's just start Python again and run the same commands minus that last one and we'll end up with a state very similar to what we would have had we undone. So, this is a pretty, I mean, it's kind of this nice, fairly general strategy. It's a replaying state by replaying actions. And once you have the infrastructure for this, you can add other things, cool things like, ah, if I have a terminal state, maybe I could go back, throw this in a text editor, edit a function, and I'll have, see what the implications of that were. Maybe I could have automatic like reloading where I have a file and I could change a function in that file and watch that file. When it changes, we could change the output of running that function. Um, so this is a powerful idea that goes beyond just undo. It's kind of being able to modify our program at arbitrary points. So pretty cool, pretty general idea. Here I threw together a Haskell version of this. So any interactive interpreter you could sort of imagine working like this. Uh, but there are some sadnesses associated with this method of undo. Uh, for one, it takes time. So maybe you're doing something here. I'm building a couple 10,000 numbers. Um, and then I get to undo and it says undo is going to take one second. And maybe it could be 100 seconds, right? The amount of time that it took Cumulity to run all of those previous things. So uh, that's, that's a little unfortunate. Um, I actually added that message that says it's gonna take one second to be Python because it was frustrating that it would just freeze there. And this way you can undo multiple lines to avoid the N squared problem of repeatedly undoing like that. Another sadness here is that uh, there are non-deterministic actions that we do sometimes in programming languages. We've got time, I've got random events. Um, Maybe you're gonna ask for the memory address of this list in Python. Maybe I'm gonna read on standard in. That's what input does. And all of these, if I try to undo in a sec, you might see them change. Um, or I'm gonna get a different time, a different random number. Um, interestingly, so here we go. Here are our different numbers. You see things changing. So output of your program could change because of that. I'm actually caching the input. It seemed like in an interactive interpreter, maybe you want to cache reads on standard in. But it would be a lot of work to go through and cache all this stuff. Anytime your program interacts with the outside world, every syscall, are we gonna kind of mock that out? So that seems like a lot of work. Um, and then there are non-idempotent actions that are gonna run again. So maybe um, here, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna import this, create a temp file here, and, um, oh shoot, uh, I just lost my train of thought for a second. I, I, I need to do a quick errand. Um, I'm just gonna buy some shoes real quick because I just, I just thought of it, so I need to do it right now. Um, but, sorry, or ASAP. Okay, okay, but let's go ahead. So, um, oh, not yet, not yet. So, so I'm, okay, I'm gonna just buy the shoes again, buying shoes again. So, uh, but the, the, the thing I'm actually worried about here is that these temporary directories, right? I'm created a temp directory. If now I run some code and then I go to undo that stuff, um, I'm gonna end up with more temporary directories because that was a side effect that happened again. So every time I do this, I get more temporary directories. And this isn't, oh great, my shoes are, oh, my shoes are here, terrific, that's great. Oh, but I didn't, I didn't want, I, I didn't want four pairs of shoes. What's, what, shoot, intended. So there's our, oh no, right? Temporary directories aren't a big deal. They get cleaned up when we close Python, but, but more shoes is. Maybe you hit the network. Maybe you do side effecty things you don't actually want to happen multiple times. So that idea is out. Let's try to save our state and restore it on undo. Lots of programs can do this. Um, MATLAB or R have built-in functions for serializing your state and you can reload it. Although it might take a lot of space to do that. And in Python, we don't have something like that built in. So I wish we could kind of efficiently store the representation in memory of our program. Um, uh, well, there's a, there's a thing called fork that could do that. So maybe we took our program and we forked it. We made a copy. So this makes a copy of a process and the memory associated with it, but the operating system stores it efficiently for us. So let's fork our process, prompt for input, do the thing. I'll just show an example. Um, over on the right-hand side here, I have um, PS tree, which is gonna show us the processes and the child processes of something. And on the left-hand side, we're gonna 
do something, and then I'm gonna try to undo it. You can see I'm getting more processes, fork, fork, and I get these different copies. And in the old versions, in the parent process, it's still that original state, but in the child process, it's our new state. So I can say undo, and C is undefined now. I can undo a few more times, and we see all those child processes die, and B is undefined. This works pretty well. Um, the terminal state's not great, though, so let's use a pseudo terminal to kind of capture the terminal state here. And now, if I say undo, we'll actually get the old state back. Um, and this is a pretty common thing. Like, we could do this on a lot of programs, a lot of interactive interpreters, and I can actually encapsulate these changes in a thing called readline, which is a C library lots of interactive interpreters use. Um, the patch looks like this. And I just have to recompile my different interpreters with this, and I can add undo to almost anything, except recompiling is kind of a pain. So I heard about this thing called LD preload, uh, which is pretty neat. I was sort of worried about it at first, but then I Googled it, it turns out it's fun and easy. So that's great, so I, I went with it. And, and now you can have undo in any interactive interpreter, which is terrific. Here we have um, IRB, the interactive Ruby interpreter, and I'm gonna try it, I hope it works. A, B equals two, let's try to undo it. Great, it looks good, and it's not defined. Terrific. So we have undo in lots of interactive interpreters, and it works. It works real well. Ignore. Don't worry about this. It just. It's just. It's just when you try to quit. And if you don't quit, it's fine. Just stay in your REPL. Um, and this. This basically works perfectly, which is terrific. So, Laryl will. Uh, it doesn't work perfectly, actually. So. Um, I wish I could do this really right. If we build up an interpreter from scratch, I think we'd kind of pull this off. I'd really like to have kind of long-running programs I could undo. And by doing these snapshots, we lost an important thing, which is being able to edit previous lines of our session. So I'd really like to be able to do that again. Um, if as long as we're like recreating the universe, let's say no actions can escape the box, there'll be no shopping for shoes API in this new interpreter we're gonna build. I wanna change any part of the program and see the effects immediately. I don't wanna wait for them, so I'm gonna use both snapshots and maybe uh, efficient copies, we're gonna need a lot of stuff to do this. It's gonna be a lot of work. Um, so we do that work, we made a Python prototype, did a lot of bytecode debugging, and then voila, we've got this interesting um, environment kind of written in JavaScript where we have a interpreter that you can rewind time in because all of those are snapshots. We took all those snapshots, we can go back, we can step through because we have deterministic replay, the caching we talked about before, Stepping backwards is actually going back to the previous snapshot, deterministically running up to that point. So we're using those ideas from the two undo techniques we'd looked at before, we can make this kind of interesting, powerful thing. And we have a run program from here, change the future, which is the combination of, I wanna change something early in my program, but I don't wanna rerun it from the very beginning. I wanna take that snapshot, the last time that thing changed, run from here. And we can use these tools to make this thing, Dalsenio, some kind of music pun, if you get it. Uh, but here I'm playing golf, I'm gonna throw my, my golf ball, oh, it didn't quite make it in. Um, I wish I could tweak the code that did that, and I wish I didn't have to restart my program to do it. So if I just change this fire function, um, and I remember the last time that function ran, I can resume execution at the last time that function ran when I edit that code. So this is kind of this powerful idea of um, if I'm changing initialization code, I'll have to go all the way back to the beginning, right? If I'm changing code, so here these are global variables, all the way back to the beginning. If I'm changing code that's the draw function, I have to go back one frame, it's very instant. If I'm changing code that has to do with bouncing off of um, the paddle here, then I'm just changing the bounce function. We know the last time the bounce function ran was the last time it hit. And so each time we get this instant feedback. It's like tweaking code like it's CSS and just playing with things. Um, but there's this tension that like a normal way to write func like games like this is to have a main loop and you'd call all the code, run all the functions every frame loop. So it's not super useful to rewind to the last time you call the function. So this paradigm doesn't, doesn't work quite as well. So um, maybe we could do something with uh, running, all, so this is the problem. We have code like this, doesn't work well with code like this, a, a synchronous blocking of a bunch of actors, each one's running their own thing. The undo I described would be really powerful here, the rewind to that previous state. So what if you had a bunch of little actors and they're all running their own little programs and then you could tweak them and rewind the state back, see those effects immediately. So we made a little prototype of this. Over on the left-hand side, you can see the, the scheme code that you could be modifying. You can see some undo here. Each of these little missile things is running its own like, synchronous kind of program in this interpreted language where we can have the rewind and you can modify that code. But we still have a big issue here. So this, this is our language. 
um, you'll notice there's a lot of parentheses. And if there's a thing we know from programming language history, it's, well, parentheses are okay, but the word has to be on the left side of the first parentheses if this thing's ever gonna be popular. So <laughs> let's take a JavaScript interpreter instead. And we still have our efficient interpreter, but we're gonna change an ex a existing JavaScript interpreter to kind of record function executions. We have to copy state. And now the user can write JavaScript and we still have our, our powerful undo -y thing where you know, I can see what code is running. If I fire a missile, I can watch the missile code down here running. But because it's this blocking thing, this undo works real well where I can say, let's resume execution at that last point in this. Um, and then spaceships, I promise spaceships in the thing. So, so you can put some spaceship sprites on and it looks kind of cool. Um, but this is my attempt to, like, this pure version of, not pure, this powerful version of undo such that um, when you make a change, we rewind the state and you can kind of tweak the constants in your AI code for your missiles and see what happens. Um, I have some, some credits and things and that's it. Thank you. <laughs>